love tomato flavoured crisps, but you don't get many of them. So when I saw this and it said, naughty tomato, I thought, I'm having a bit of you. Well, hell. Well, hello there, perfect drafters. Ho, ho, ho. It's Merry Christmas, people. How are we doing? Are we good? Good. So, I'm inside. I am no longer in Big Bold Reviews HQ because it's just too cold to go out there. I don't want to trudge up the garden. I don't want to when I want a festive pint. And there may well be the odd changes of kegs throughout the festive period. So I've brought it inside where it's got that bit more accessibility while I'm having my Christmas dinner. So happy days. There it is. There it is. But what's in it now? I'll tell you what. The bald head. <laughs> the bald head's getting hot in that. It's going to have to come off, but Merry Christmas, perfect drafters. Right. <laughs> Show that shiny bald head now. Right. Okay. What's in there? It's a newish keg. It's a lager. It's that mahal, mahu, mahal thing. It's a red keg with that mahal thing on it. So therefore, I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So it's a Spanish lager. It's 5.1% and it's £37.90 of your finest dollarage. So a little bit less than that 40 notes, which I always see as a bit of a threshold now. Yeah. Just over that 5% as well, which is quite nice. Still almost sessionable, really. Over the festive period, that's sessionable, in it, in it. But yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like your Stella, it's like your Jupiler, your Hertog. It's those kind of, you know, ABVs that we're looking at. So it's got some strong competition on the perfect draft. It has just because it's a lager, let's face it. I mean, we've had some that have been a bit less recently, like the, the Innocent Gun. You know, that's, uh, that's a bit less. Obviously, you've had tenants on there. Not saying recent, but, you know, again, a bit less. Budweiser. What's Budweiser? Is that 4.5, something like that? So, you know, again, a bit less than this. So, there are many, many lagers, like I say, on the perfect draft. So, this has got some stiff competition. But this is seen also as quite a mainstream lager. So, interesting. What is this going to be like? What is it going to be like? So... I'm going to get stuck into it, people, yeah? I'm thinking it might taste a bit like Estrella, you know, that kind of thing. A Lisa. Is it called Lisa anymore? It's not, is it? It's something else. It escapes me perfect drafters. It escapes me what it's called. I'll tell you what I want it to taste like, yeah? I'm telling you. AMPM. I think a lot of people miss that, yeah? So I think it's Thornbridge, wasn't it? Thornbridge Brewery. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, still got, have we still got Jaipur on there? Not sure. But we've had a recent Thornbridge keg. I'm sure we have. Green Mountain. There it is. It's popped in there, but obviously that's an IPA. So I'm just wondering, could, could one day that AMPM come back on? Or has it totally been discontinued? I don't know. Might be babbling about that perfect drafters. Might be getting your hopes up. Totally unrealistic hopes. But <laughs> what is on there? Absolutely is this Mahal. So quite a mainstream beer. See it in quite a few pubs. You see it in some restaurants as well. So I think I've had it. I think I've had it. And I think I liked it. So I'm quite looking forward to this. I think it's going to be quite quaffable. As usual, I've got some snackage. Got some snackage ready to be had. It's a home bargain special. No longer a Tesco's. This is from Home Bargains. Ho, ho, Home Bargains. I'm being festive. Festive. Right. Without further people, let's have a look at that keg. And I probably will show you the keg this time because I'm a vocation hop, skip and juice review last time. Said I was going to show you the keg. I didn't. Mm. I'm a man of a word. So there it is. It's just up here. Yeah. Man of a word. There it is. That's that one. That's the hop, skip and juice, which is irrelevant to this review. But I've now kept my word for my last review. Right, so without further people, let's have a look at that keg. Let's do the pour, I'll bring it in, we'll have a look, has it got any bubs? I want some bubs in it this time, yeah, I want a bit of carbonation. I've got the Stella Chalice, that's my go-to chalice for any lager on this perfect draft. It's a beauty. In fact, this time of year, and I think my mate's got one, um, 
You can get a stellar chalice with some nice snowflakes, nice festive glass. You can. So hunt that beauty down. But anyway, I'll do the pour, bring it in. We'll see if we've got any bubs. I ain't going to sniff it. It's not the boldy way. But I will bring it back just here, which isn't far from there. Yeah. Have a sippy suppy sue. Give you my first impressions. And then I'm going to have some snackage. I'll rate both the beer and the snackage. <laughs> it's the usual order of play, people. Usual order. Without further, let's have a look at that keg. There we go then, people. There is the Mahal keg, sharing the real taste of Madrid since 1890. Fair old time, fair play. That's the perfect draft keg. Nice red background, it's plain, it's simple. It's got five stars. Is it a five star lager? Let's get it poured, people. Here we go then, peeps. Like I say, Stella Chalice, love it, love it. Let's get it poured. Did he tip over? Is he going to? Look at that damage. Is it going to go? If that don't go, that's phenomenal. Because that is living on the edge. I'll tell you what, it hasn't done. <laughs> little drip. Little drip. Right, this looks lively, people. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to foam moustache my face. Okay, so there we go then, people. Look at that head. Huh? It's a beauty. And look how lively that is. That... That's a volcano, right there. So lovely straw-like colour. Looks a little bit dark on this camera for what I can see, but it might look lighter when I'm actually downloading it. But look at that, that's a lively beauty. And that, that's why this chalice is so good. Said it every time I've used it. Um, few bubs, few bubs kicking off then. And uh, the white head, not that compact, but you know, okay for a lager. Let's get it soaked. <laughs> there we go, we've got it poured. Look at that. I mean, it does do some funny things. The old Stelly, Stelly? Stelly Welly Chalice. Look at that, I mean, it's got a weird kind of domage now. Very weird, like an inverted thing. Not sure what that's kicking off with there. But anyway, <laughs> there it is. There it is. I tell you what. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this lager. After quite a few IPAs and stuff like that, and you know, sometimes you just want a quaffable lager, don't you? You do. Cheers, perfect drafters. Let's give it a go. Cheers. It's refreshing. That is refreshing. I mean, you know, standard three degrees. This ain't gonna taste any different on your original to your pro. This is gonna be the same. It doesn't need any extra temperature. Even this time of year when it's a little bit chilly, yeah, a lager still needs to be served like that. I like extra cold lager. I like that three degrees or below. And that's just refreshing. It is. I'd say carbonation levels are good. Um, reminds me almost a little bit like a Kingfisher, just off the off the bat there, you know. So carbonation levels probably a little bit less than say a Stella, definitely less than your you know your canned Fosters and Carlin and stuff like that. Because and why I mention those is because this is more of a mainstream lager. It is. It's nice. It's nice. There's no bad aftertaste there, and you have got to be careful with that with some lagers. Some can just make you, you know, go like that. This won't. It doesn't. It's pleasurable, but I wouldn't say it's got anything majorly distinctive about it. Not really. Not that gets you straight away. You know, there's not like a Hawkston hint of lemon or anything like that, or that kind of pepperiness that you might have, say, on a, on a, like, hells, like a Schneider's or something like that. That's just not there. 
it is very safe, very safe. You know, bang that on over the festive period. No one's gonna, no one's gonna go. What have you put on there? That's terrible. Everyone's gonna be having a go at it. In fact, that keg might last minutes instead of hours because people will just quaff that down. It's a party keg. It's a party keg. That's what that is. In the summer, barbecues, nice hot weather. That I'll go down a treat. It reminds me of a kind of a a Bex Gold. Um, that kind of standard uh better than bex better than budweiser I, but i'm just not a budweiser fan i know there are some out there i'm just not um corona i would say that competes with that on a nice summer's day you know but lob a lime in a corona and you probably hit that just a bit better than this um i don't think that lisa or whatever it's called now is far too far a cry from this um that's similar. Would abide again. I think I would. I think I would. I mean, personally, if it was just for my own consumption, I would pick a Hawkston over this because I like that little bit of a, a lemony, fruity twang to a, to a lager that, you know, just gives it a different kind of edge, but not everyone would. Would I buy it over Stella? Probably not, but Stella's absolute class on this, really is. If they tamper with Stella, and I've heard rumours, if they ever tampered with it, then I'd say this would come above it. You know, that 5.1% ABV is a nice ABV for a lager, I reckon. I mean, then you've got the th likes of, you know, Lowenbrow. Now that, you know, that, no, I wouldn't buy this over a Lowenbrow. But then that is a Hells. That said, I'd buy it over a Camden Hells any day of the week. It's got more of a kind of medium body to it. That's what I would say. Whereas I think that Camden Hells is a bit thin. A bit, yeah, yeah. But as you can see, that goes down very easily. Let's have a little bit of snackage. So like I say, I was in home bargains and I've got to be honest, I was struggling. I need to go to Lidl. I need to go to Lidl or Aldi really because I've had quite a few suggestions of snackage from those and not had them yet. So anyway, I wasn't there. I was in home bargains and I saw these and I used to like those, um, what were they like? The tomato balls, tomato puffs or something like that. Love tomato flavoured crisps, but you don't get many of them. So when I saw this and it said naughty tomato, I thought, I'm having a bit of you. Naughty tomato made with dal, corn and rice. I don't know what dal is, but it doesn't sound that naughty. And neither does corn and rice. So I don't know what makes it naughty, but hopefully it's a little bit spicier. Hopefully it's got a very big tomato twang. That's what I'm looking for. It's a 100 gram bag. Has it got any blurbage? Yes, it has. Right. I don't know how you say it. Kur -kur, kur -kur, kur -kur. I'll tell you what, this review is a mixed bag of bad pronunciations. But anyway, kur -kur, that's what I'm going to say. Unleash the flavour. Bursting with a delicious, authentic fusion of rich spices, seasonings and fragrant herbs. Nice. Curcure is made using only the finest of ingredients. Made with dal, don't know what it is. Doesn't say that, but dal, I don't know what it is. Corn and rice. It's got a little top tip. Try mixing tomato, chili, onion, coriander, and squeeze of lemon into a bowl of curcure. What? I'm not gonna do it, but what, you're gonna stick those all in a bowl, then stick that in with some tomato, chili, onion, coriander, and squeeze a bit of lemon over them. Interesting. Anyway, let's crack into the little beauties. There's nothing else, but they are suitable for vegetarians. Kirk, your logo are registered trademarks of PepsiCo. Wow. <laughs> PepsiCo, the walkers. Walkers.co.uk recycle. They're made by walkers, they're made in Leicester. Would you know? You wouldn't think they're walkers, would you? 
Well, they are. Anyway, let's crack in. Let's give them a snifty. <laughs> Smelling naughty, naughty tomato. Right, they look like a knickknack. I've had quite a few snacks that look like knickknacks. Oh yeah, in fact, some of the recent ones, what are them wicked bags? Wicked they weren't. Wickedly bad, yeah. They were like anemic knickknacks, whereas these are not. These are a decent color. Um, I've got a three hand grab. Let's pop them in. <laughs> nice. Good crunch, good crunch. And a bit of spiciness, which is un, that was unexpected. That was totally unexpected. But there is actually some spice. Oh, these are all right. These are nice. You know, that really has surprised me because I wasn't, I didn't have any spicy expectations of these crisps. If you call them crisps, I don't know if you do. Oh, they're good. They're good. Naughty tomato. They are tomato tantastic. I tell you what, they're good. I like them. This pack contains three or four servings. Not for me, they don't, mate. They're, they're a belter. And I tell you what, now, now I'm actually tasting them. That top tip of mixing tomato, chilli, onion, coriander, and a squeeze of lemon into a bowl of these, that, that might be something else. There's a lovely warmage at the back of the throat. They're a quality crisp, quality crunchy crisp, if you call it a crisp. They've got a quality crunch, nice mouth feel, lovely aftertaste, lovely kind of warming spiciness afterwards. But that tomato hit right from the start is lovely. Oh, they're a, they're a gem. Little gem, I and mean, they weren't expensive. I think that was like a quid. Oh, they're nice. I'm happy with them. So then, people, this might be the last review of 2023. Well, certainly the last review pre-Christmas. I might do one in between if I'm bored of playing with the kids and their toys. But, you know, obviously I won't be. So, this, the Mahou, Mahou, whatever it is. Let's give it another sippy suppy sue. Sometimes the snackage does lift it. I probably was about to give that a six and a half. Not, not, not terrible. I might now give it a 7.5. I mean, it's no Spaten. It's not a Jupiler, it's definitely not a Hertog. But I'd say it's better than a Bex and a Budweiser, which is those kind of mainstream jobbos. So it's got a place. And I think people will recognize it. More people might even buy the machine because it's on there. But, you know, when you're looking for the machine over Christmas and stuff like that, you know, people will have looked at it and looked at the range of beers that are available. And quite a few, they would probably go, what are they? I've got no idea what they are, you know. Even though there's some absolute belters that probably a lot of people wouldn't know what they are. They would recognise the brand of this. I just think they would. And think, hmm, I might get it because that's got a safe mainstream lager on there. One that I know I like. And fair play. They will. It's a draft quality lager at home, which is very quaffable. <laughs> 7.5. And them, them I'm giving a nine. I was, I'm well surprised at them. I am well surprised. They are a cheeky tomato taste. If you like tomato snacks, you like a bit of spice, good crunch, and I'll tell you what, nice dry edge of the mouth. Nice dry edge of the mouth for having a beer like that. They're a good combo. I'm giving them a nine. So I think, yeah, I got these from Home Bargains. 
Didn't know they were walkers made, but you know, fair play. They're good. They get a nine. So there we go, perfect drafters. That's quaffable. I'm gonna pour myself another one. All it leaves me to say is have an absolute belter of a weekend. And if I don't do another review before Christmas, make sure you have an absolute festive belter. Please do. Yeah, enjoy a few beers with a few mates over this festive period. Enjoy. Have an absolute quality, relaxing, merry, merry Christmas. Cheers, perfect drafters. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you.